everyone, I'm Elaine. Welcome to my channel, Handful of Daisies DIY. On my channel, I upcycle old items that I find at thrift stores and flea markets, and sometimes people just give me old items, which I really appreciate. Um, I do upcycle these items for my vendor booth at By the Season in Salem, Virginia. And also, my thrifted items are on my website at Handful of Daisies. So if that's something you're interested in, hit that subscribe button and join our DIY family. Don't forget to also hit that notification bell and select all so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting my channel. I hope you're finding inspiration in the projects that we've done so far. And thank you so much for all the comments that you've given me. That helps me to know the things that you're interested in so I can make better content for you. So this week we have a furniture flip. So we're going to go down to the workshop and get that started. Here's a look at the table we're going to be working on. It is a high top table. Um, the top you can see is pretty messed up, so I'm going to use this board to replace that. And I only have one stool, um, but I'm going to use this stool and maybe look for um, another one like it and refinish it as well. So I'm going to start by taking the nuts off the top of these screws. And then I'm going to just put it on top of my new board. It's this exact same size. And I'm going to trace it out um, so I know where to drill my holes. These holes were about half inch, so that's what I'm going to be using. So I'm just going to hang my board over the side of my table so I don't drill down into my table. I was having a little trouble with my drill today. Couldn't get that to stay tight. I'm just going to place it on top just to make sure that I didn't drill them in the wrong place. And it fit. So I'm going to clean off my space just a little bit and then I'm going to sand this down a little bit. I am using this orbital sander I just picked up at Walmart. Um, you can pick up these for around $20 at Walmart and it works really well. The little piece that I took off the end, that's just to use if you want to use your shop vac with it. Um, sometimes I do use my shop vac, but today I'm just going to use the dust collector that comes with it as well.
when I drilled those holes it did uh, on the back side um, splinter the wood a little bit so I'm gonna sand that down smooth and I'll just place that side up so you won't see that once the tabletop is on top of it This is just a stabilizer board and I'm going to paint it the same color I paint the base. I'm just going to put it down on there one more time to make sure everything looks alright. I'm going to scuff sand the base a little bit. It was a little shiny and it was in pretty good condition. Um, the scuffs that you see on it are just paint. Um, it isn't down in the wood. I am just using um, a light grit sandpaper to scuff this because I really don't want to go too far down into the paint. I'm not trying to get all the way back down to the wood. So now I'm just going to sand the top as well. Um, there are a lot of scratches in the top, so I started out with the light grit sandpaper and then I ended up changing to a more coarse grit sandpaper and just to get all those scratches out. And you can see I had it setting on top of the stool and it was a little wobbly, so I did end up changing that and putting it on my workbench. So once I finished up with the whole table, um, I just cleaned it off and then went around the edges with the sander as well. And you can see it still has some of the stain on it. Once I come back with a lighter grit sandpaper, I'll be able to get all of that off. Now I'm going to change to that light grip sandpaper and smooth out the top really well. Like I said, this will finish um, getting the stain off of the top. And it'll smooth down the roughness that I created with the coarse sandpaper. So you can see I have one bad spot. I'm not sure if that was a water spot that maybe I just didn't see before or it was due to sanding too much in that one spot. My plan was to 
stain the top of this, but I'm not sure that's going to work out well. So once I've wiped everything down, um, I use my antiquing wax, which is what I usually use for my stain. Um, that It doesn't smell bad and it dries pretty quickly. So I'm just watering down the Waverly antiquing wax. And I'm just going to put it on with a chip brush and then I'm going to wipe it back. As you can see, it makes that spot stand out even more. So of course then I just went ahead and finished it up and then decided I'm just going to have to paint the top. So I put that to the side to let it dry. And then we're going to move on to the base. I'm going to wipe all the dust down, make sure I don't have anything left so the paint will adhere properly. And you can see I have all of these different kinds of paint. I couldn't decide what I wanted to use. Ended up using this Dixie Belle in Annabellum. It's a really pretty blue. Not sure if you can see that. It's kind of dark in my workshop just because I couldn't open the door. It was so hot outside. I think I may do the top in plaster, um, but of course I've been known to change my mind quite a few times as I go through my projects. And I'm also using this um, trim brush that I picked up at, at Walmart as well. I like the handle on it and it's easier to hold. So I'm going to start out by just spritzing down the piece because Dixie Bell paint is pretty thick. I'm just going to start at the top and work my way down. Once I get some paint on there, um, I'll try to do really long strokes just to help with keeping it from having brush strokes. But spritzing it with water does help a lot with the brush strokes as well. do a lot of my projects in black and white so I am trying to do a few more colors. Um, I found that um, at my booth um, at By the Season blue does sell really well this year so I thought I would try this out and as I was putting it on it's such a pretty color and it does dry a little bit darker And I really wanted to spray these pieces, but um, my air compressor wasn't working properly, so I wasn't able to use my spray gun. So I'm going to go ahead and distress this piece. I know a lot of you don't like distressing, but it does sell really well um, at my booth when it's distressed. So I'm just going to get the edges just where it would normally have worn. And since it had black underneath, um, that's what's showing through. And I really like that a lot. I'm just using a rag and some water, um, some wet distressing rather than using sandpaper. You can see here um, what it looks like.
Now we're going to move on to the top again. It's dried completely. Um, I decided just to do it in um, black and I didn't have any Dixie Belle in black so I'm using the Waverly um, ink which is a really deep black and it's really pigmented so it normally only takes one coat and it's really thick as well so I am going to use uh, my spritz bottle and spray that down just to thin it out a little bit So this piece is going to be a little darker than what I had originally wanted since I wanted to stain the top, but I think the black's going to turn out okay. Let me know in the comments below um, what color choices you would have made for this piece. I do have it setting on my Lazy Susan so it is easy for me to turn. So I don't have to move the whole tabletop to get all the way around. You can see how well this black covers. It was really unfortunate that I had that bad spot. I really wanted the top of the stain. But that's how it works out sometimes. You just have to figure out a different way. And I did paint around the bottom as well. I didn't um, video that part. Um, so I'm just going to do the edges um, on the, with the black as well. You can see here the contrast between the black and blue. What do you think about that? Do you think it's too much dark? I kind of like the blue and the black together. I'm adding um, a little water in with my paint again because it is really thick. So once I finished that up, I moved on to the stool. Now I only had one of these, so um, I'm gonna have to be on the lookout for another. Um, I'm starting out with the black. And I'm just going to randomly paint some black um, all along the edges. I'm going to paint blue on top of it, but I wanted some of that black to shine through. Since I distressed the base and uh, it had black underneath, I wanted to have that on the stool as well. So I really didn't have to completely paint it black.
So once that all dried, I got out my blue. Now I didn't top coat that black. Um, I'm not really going to wet distress this one. I'm just going to let the black show through the blue paint a little bit. It's not so easy to paint these um, spindles on the bottom of the chairs. It's, I would much rather use my spray gun and paint this, but sometimes your equipment doesn't work. You have to go back to the manual way. Once I finished all of the bottom, I turned it around just so I could get the top parts as well. I always start on the bottom, that way if I have any drips, um, I can take care of that um, once I'm doing the top. Now I'm going to move on to the top coat um, for the top of the table. I'm using um, this Waverly um, for top coat. I'm just going to pour it on and smooth it all out. I will list everything I used in my description below. So if you want to know any of the products that I've used, just check that out below. This Waverly top coat says that it doesn't yellow, um, so we're going to see how that works out. Um, sometimes when I use the polyacrylic, um, it does yellow a little bit, um, so I thought I would try this. I always like to try different things just to see um, what works better. So if you've refinished a furniture piece and you have a top coat that you really like, leave me a comment below and let me know what you use. Just trying to use really long strokes. Um, hopefully it won't leave brush marks. Now we're going to move on to the top of the stool. I'm just I'm going to use this fabric I picked up at um, Goodwill. Um, yes, you can pick up fabric at Goodwill. Um, it was three dollars for this. I'm not sure exactly how much how many yards is on this, but it was a lot for three dollars. So I'm just gonna roll it out, set my stool on top, and just kind of randomly measure what size I need just to make sure I have enough to go all the way around and pull it up to staple it. I always cut a little more than what I really need. I'm 
I'm also going to cut the corners off just so I don't have all that extra fabric on the edges. And for those of you who are good at upholstering things, um, please turn away because I am not very good at this and um, I have a lot to learn when it comes to upholstering. So I'm just going to do the best I can. I'm going to be using my electric staple gun um, just to staple this on. I'm just going to fold up um, each side and then I'll work my way around. But if you have any advice for me on how to do this more easily, please let me know in the comments below. Like I said, I'm not very good at this. I don't upholster very often and doing something round um, was even harder. This was really nice thick fabric and it had some of that blue um, going through it. It was an off-white, but I picked this fabric when I thought I was going to be staining the top. So now I'm not sure with the black top how well, um, since this fabric is so light, it's going to match. As you can see, I'm struggling a little bit with this, but I really did want to cover that brown faux leather top, although it was in really good condition. So the top's really smooth. Um, it is puckered around the edges a little. So I'm just gonna come in and cut off all the excess fabric around the bottom. And I do end up coming back, putting a few more staples in it um, where it needed it. So here's a look at how it turned out. Like I said, the top's really smooth. The edges, not so much. Let me know what you think about the black top with the blue on the bottom. And as you can see, um, the top, that really light top on the stool, doesn't really match, um, so I'm definitely going to either have to change out the stools or um, do something different on the top of that. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any additional tips and tricks for, for me on um, how to better upholster, please let me know in the comments below. Don't forget, you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram. Um, jump over to Facebook and join our VIP group. Um, we'd love to have you there. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week for another DIY.